So today I wanted to walk through a new setup that I have with the M32, the Midas console. And I've been using that in a couple different ways. One as a audio interface and controller with uh, USB and running it that way. Then I was running a Waves Grid system where I had it networked and it was, I had a Waves card in it and it was networked with a couple other Waves devices. So I was trying to think of how can I integrate with my Apollo because I really like to use the Apollo setup and obviously the Apollo stuff is great, but I still like to have this as kind of the centerpiece so I can route things through here, I can integrate with um, two computers, which I'll talk about that here in a little bit, but it gives me a lot of flexibility when I have this as sort of the centerpiece. So I was trying to think how can I do that and make that make sense and still be able to route things the way that I want to route them. So the Apollo, of course, has ADAT, and I have a twin, I have an Apollo X and I have a satellite Octo. And so um, the Apollo X has eight at in and out, eight channels each, whereas the twin has eight more channels in. So I thought, hmm, so what I could do is I could take out the Waves card. I'd already taken out the USB card and replaced it with the Waves card. Take the Waves card out, put a light pipe ADAT card in there, which has, um, has four banks. Uh, of, of light pipes. So you have 32 by 32 um, of ADAT and replace that in the board and then connect that to my Apollos. And so now I have 16 channels going from the board into the Apollos over light pipe and I have eight channels from the Apollos coming back to the board. And so that's gives me a lot of flexibility. The other unique thing is that's all on my Mac and I run a Mac Mini with that and the Mac Mini works great because I have a lot of DSP with the Apollo stuff so power wise it's great. Um, but I also have a Pro Tools rig that I have on a PC, one of the creation stations from Sweetwater and so I, I like to use that too. So sometimes I'll work in Pro Tools on that and then sometimes I'll work in Studio One with the um, working on the Mac. And so I want to be able to still use the M32 as the centerpiece, but I already I took out the card and it just has a light pipe card into it now. And so I'm thinking, how am I going to integrate that now with the PC and get that working again? And so Clark Technic, make, Technic makes a box that is a AES50 to USB converter. So I've taken the AES50 out of this, which it has 48 channels of AES50, and I rounded that on that box, which is basically looks like a direct box, and it has a Ethernet out, I'm sorry, it has a USB out. That USB out is going into my PC. So now, from a routing standpoint, let's take a look at it. I'm using the screen here. I have the uh, M32 software that I'm utilizing to show kind of what's going on. And so if we go look at routing, so for inputs, I've got inputs one through eight, and this is actually a new thing that um, they're using. They do these user inputs now, which is pretty darn cool. So I have on inputs one through eight, I have local in one and two. So that's my two mic pre's on the board directly. Then I have inputs three, four, and five on the console are aux in one, two, and three which I have those patched in from my analog gear. So I have an LA610 on uh, one, aux input one. So it's a line level out into a line level in on the M32. I have um, a, a Grace 101 on aux input two, and then I have a uh, 6176, a universal audio channel strip. And that is on aux input three. So that's on my first layer. So if we take a look at my first layer here on the board, we see I have those labeled. Midas 1 and 2, LA610, Grace 6176. You can see I'm coming in on the Midas 2. That's where my mic is. And then I have three empty channels there on the first layer. So my next layer, as you see, I have it written here. I have Apollo 1 through 8. So if we go back to the routing and we take a look at input, I have card coming in from 1 through 8. Okay, so that is the card, ADAT card, one through eight, the first bank of light pipe, that's coming from 
the Apollo. So I'm routing eight channels of the Apollo back into the Midas. So where I can utilize that is twofold. One is I can bring back just the stereo mix and monitor what's happening in the Apollo. I could also bring back eight stems if I wanted. I could route those out inside my DAW and bring those back as you know eight individual channels. Um, so I have the ability to just get eight channels back over to the board. All right. So then we go back to the uh, to the input channels. The next layers I have uh, creation station CS one through eight. That's my next bank. Okay. So that is channels seventeen through twenty four on the board. And so this is, again, we go back to our routing. This is AES-50B, which is where I have that Clark Technic box plugged into. And so I have six, and those are coming in on channels 17 through 24, channels 25 through 32, and those are being routed on AES-50, 9 through 16. So 1 through 8, 9 through 16. And that's just a single USB going through AES-50. So those are all my inputs. Now, output-wise, I'm also sending back out. So on AES-50, I'm sending those 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. I'm sending those back out AES-50. So if I want to record, in fact, they're patched wrong as I'm looking on here. It's AES-50B. And so I'm going to repatch those and then unpatch them to here. And so it doesn't matter, actually. So I've got those going to AES-50B, 1 through 8. 9 through 16. So my local channels, 1 through 8, which we just walked through, that's my preamps, those are going to be routed back to the creation station over EAS 50. Now I can also route, and I don't have it right now, I'll go ahead and do it just as we're talking here, I can route my AES 50 returns, excuse me, my card returns from the Apollo, I can route those back to my PC over here. So I can take AES 50B out 9 through 16, and I could patch that to card 1 through 8. So now the returns on the card, so the eight channels of ADAT coming back from the Apollo, can now be routed. Those are now being routed to the AES 50B, which is the uh, PC, and routed back to the PC. So as you can see, I've got all kinds of options. In fact, one of the things that I was doing earlier is I was playing back some tracks from my PC on the creation station on one, one and two. That same one and two was being routed back out through ADAT into the Apollo and was showing up in console. And then I was being able to route that back out console, back out into my monitor controller. So what I could do is I could AB from what I'm hearing from my PC going through the Midas to what's coming directly off of the Apollo. So if I want to just convert, uh, listen to converters between what's happening on the Midas, what's happening on the Apollo, I can do that. I can also do that with the Apollo Twin. I have the original Twin and then the Apollo X. So if I want to compare the converter quality between the Twin and the X, I can do that just by muting and unmuting right here at the console because everything is coming back to the console. Now, the one thing that I haven't gotten completely set up yet, because I'm still trying to think through the best way to do it, is I want to be able to do hardware inserts. I have a variety of analog gear. Now, of course, I can do that on the front end, and I can patch it. I have a patch bay, and I have everything routed through the patch bay. So I could patch things in if I wanted to run a compressor or an EQ on something on the front end. But if I want to mix with it, and I want to do a hardware insert, the one way I can do it with the Midas board is you have those six aux inputs. Now, right now, I'm using them for those preamp returns. I could patch those into a different place um, using just coming in regular inputs, because um, I have plenty of regular inputs left. And then I can use those aux inputs and outputs as hardware inserts. So again, I could route things back onto a channel. I could do a hardware insert at the console and then re-record it back into either my DA, into my uh, PC or back into the Mac. Now, the only thing with that is there is going to be latency because I'm doing conversion, I'm going out to an analog piece, coming back, and then going back into the DAW on a separate channel because it's not doing it directly because I'm routing it back through the board. So I'll have to figure that out and set up the latency correctly to be able to compensate for that. 
But again, tremendous flexibility. So I can route anything to anything. I can route between my PC and my Mac and vice versa, Mac to PC. I can uh, monitor to either side. I can go back and forth. I actually have a set of monitors going, or set of outputs going directly to my monitor controller as well. So I can just go straight to the monitor controller from the Apollo, or I can go straight to the monitor controller from the Midas, either one of those. Um, so I have that flexibility. So it gives me a tremendous amount of options to be able to route things, change things, all kinds of different things from that standpoint. So anyway, I wanted to walk through that. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know. It's a little complicated. It's taken me a little bit of time to think it through. But it's, um, it's, been, it's really gotten to a point now where it gives me a tremendous amount of flexibility if I want to do a variety of different things with, uh, with mixing and controlling and recording and all that stuff all in one. So thanks so much for watching.